Good afternoon. My name is Kushbu Gupta. I am associate professor in IMT College of Pharmacy, and my topic for presentation today is cancer. So, I, you all must be aware about cancer. What is cancer, and what are its? Because this disease is getting common day by day. That's why uh, first we'll move to the introduction. What is the What is the introduction of cancer? It is a mass of tissue which is formed due to the abnormal and excessive uncoordinated growth of any cell or it may due to the proliferation of cell. That means it is characterized by abnormal growth of cell or the tissues or distant organs at that particular site are invaded or the tumor, the formation of tumor or abnormal mass of tissue is there which results from uncontrolled division or the obstruction of cell. That means in the cancer, there is an abnormal growth of tissue which is known as tumor. Basically, there is a formation of tumor in cancer which leads to the formation of this. But, and then these tumors are of two types, benign tumor and malignant tumor. In benign tumor, there is a non-cancerous cellular growth which does not invade the nearby tissue. That means this type of cancer does not spread to other body parts. But in malignant tumor, it is cancerous and undefined, unpredictable cellular growth which invades the nearby tissues directly by the lymph. That means this type of cancer spreads in blood in our circulatory system. But in benign tumor, the tumor is stays at the, if there is abnormal growth of cell, but it stays in the particular body part only. Next, there is a difference between normal and cancerous cell. How the normal cells look like and how the cancerous cell looks like. The normal cell is uniform, small, relatively have a large cytoplasmic volume. But the cancerous cell is large, with variable shape nuclei and small cytoplasmic volume. Next, in cell size and shape, cells are arranged into discrete tissue, whereas in cancerous cells, there is a variation in cell size and shape. There is a disorganized arrangement of cells. Normal cells, they possess differentiated cell structure and there is normal presentation of cell surface marker. But in cancerous cells, there is a loss of normal specialized features and elevated expression of certain cell markers. In normal cells, there is a lower layer of dividing cells and cell tissues are clearly demarcated. But in cancerous cells, there is a large number of dividing cells which are not seen clearly. Their demarcation is very poor. That's why these cancer cells are various, variable in size, they are very disorganized, and they, they are not of normal shape. They may have one or two variable shape nuclei. And that's why they do not have demarcation, that's why these are known as cancer cells. Now next, moving on to the causes of cancer. What are the causes of cancer? It may be caused due to various reasons, but some of the common causes of cancer are Drinking, excessive alcohol, obesity, environmental pollutants, smoking, radiation, and several genetic disorders. Various environmental pollutants, genetic disorders, these are all common causes and of cancer. Now, the comparison between benign and malignant tumors. What is the comparison? As we have studied before, the definition of benign and malignant tumor. But what is the comparison between them? That means that this benign tumor can also be converted into the malignant tumor. So, what is the comparison? How we will relate them? In benign tumor, as we have already discussed, that it develops slowly in a localized, abnormal, cellular manner. And this growth pushes the nearby normal tissue. 
that's why it does not invade the nearby tissue that means when this benign tumor develops it does not allow the normal tissues to become the cancerous or to grow abnormally it only spread to that body part if if it invades the nearby tissue then it will spread to the other body parts through blood and lymphatic system and we can remove it surgically but in malignant tumor it comprises of an unclear mass of cells which are growing very rapidly it lacks local growth invades the surrounding tissue and reaches the other parts of the body by vascular and lymphatic channel it cannot be removed because why it cannot be removed because it spreads throughout the body and it ultimately leads to death that means it is an unclear mass that's why it invades all the tissues and it spreads in blood that's why we cannot remove it this is the comparison between benign and malignant tumor now these cells are characterized with the help of following neoplastic distinguishing that from normal cells how they are distinguished from normal cells what are the characteristics of these cancerous cells there is uncontrolled proliferation of cancerous cells the cancerous cells are not regulated by regulatory processes of tissue growth there is a loss of function invasiveness that means rapid spread of cancer cells to secondary sites there is metastasis migration of primary tumors to another site through blood vessels or lymphatic which results in formation of secondary tumor now what is the mechanism of carcinogenesis it occurs in three steps first is initiation second is promotion and third is progression in initiation some carcinogen initiate the cell to be formed then this cell is promoted to alter the uh, this nuclei and this new al alteration in nuclei result in the pro proliferation of cell to pre neoplastic lesion there is the formation of lesion at that particular part and this lesion is formed because of the presence of this carcinogen this carcinogen promotes the cell proliferation that's why this step is known as promotion and after that this cell progresses into the several cancerous cells or we can say that it forms into a tumor because as we are, as we are seeing here there is additional genotoxic and promoting carcinogen which leads to the genomic instability and increased proliferation of cell now what is the mechanism of carcinogenesis these cancerous cells develops from normal cells in four phases as we have discussed in the diagram before first is initiation in initiation the single or multiple exposure of carcinogenesis results in change in genetic material of normal cell that means there is alteration in dna structure next one is promotion where the carcinogenesis induces the proliferation of cell and results in formation of tumor now third step is third phase is conversion where the pre cancerous cells become the cancerous and there is alteration in genetic material after this there is the progression of cell where this tumor cell spread from a primary lesion to a distant site and this in this progression also there are three step first is attachment of cancerous cell to the matrix then this cancer cell degrade the extracellular matrix and it moves cancer cell locomotes to the secondary site to the locally degraded matrix that means first that cancer cell attaches to that particular site and then it degrades that particular site and moves the, these cancer cells then moves to the secondary site and degrade the other nearby tissue these are the four steps initiation promotion and cell conversion now next is mechanism of carcinogenesis these cancerous cells develops from normal cells and classification classification of cancer first is carcinoma carcinoma 
these are right from the surface glandular or parenchymal epithelium example is cancer of breast prostate and lungs sarcoma it is derived this type of cancer is derived from connective tissues example is fibrocarcinoma fibroblast malignancy and myosarcoma lymphoma or leukemia is another type uh, as you are all aware about this this is this word is derived from blood that is that's why it is derived from hematopoietic cell and it develops from the precursors of wbc in this type of uh, cancer or in or we can say that in leukemia the cells multiply abnormally diffuse within the bone marrow and they multiply further and it creates the normal blood forming cells these neoplastic cells fill into the circulation and large number of abnormal cells circulate into the peripheral blood now next is pathophysiology of cancer in pathophysiology first the mutation of cell inactivates these tumor suppressive genes tumor suppressive genes are those genes which inhibits the formation of cancer but due to mutation in the cell or we can say that due to the changes in the activity of cells these tumor suppressive genes are inactivated due to which the cell is proliferated proliferation means the cell is divided into multiple cells this mutation inactivates the dna repair gene and due to which the proto oncogenes are converted into oncogenes and due to this mutation several tumor suppressor genes are formed and due to this mutation there is a formation of several cell several cancerous cells which results in formation of tumor or we can say that which results in the formation of cancer you can see here in the theory the pathophysiology of cancer includes the physical and hormonal changes associated with cancer and para neoplastic syndrome cancer occurs in four main stages the first is pathological stage of cancer which is determined through biopsy in biopsy there is a removal of small body tissue for laboratory examination that particular part is examined that particular body tissue is examined where we compare the that body tissue or we can say that that cancer cells are compared to the normal cells according to the guidelines there are four main stages of cancer first stage is in the first stage stage 1 the cancer is normally localized in a small area in the stage 2 the size of cancer increases in the stage 3 the size of cancer becomes much larger and start spreading to other part of the body including lymph node and stage 4 cancer has grown and spread to most other part of the body now the phases of cancer g1 g2 m phase and s phase in this phase as you can see that from b0 to g1 there is the growth of cell then in s phase dna replicates cell divides that is mitosis and finally there is a division of cell in m phase so uh, why i am telling you these phases of cancer because in uh, all the drugs yeah all the tumors work according to these phases and all the drugs act on these phases by inhibiting these phases they inhibit the formation of cancer in detail we can see in b0 phase this phase is resting phase in this phase the cell cycle starts and falls to proliferation due to this resting condition this phase is resistance to various chemotherapy because this phase is a resting condition there is no proliferation of cells so no drugs no chemotherapeutic agents act on this phase g1 phase is termed as the early protein synthesis phase in this phase the cell synthesizes protein dna and rna molecules in s phase this is synthesis phase cell synthesizes dna protein with the help of dna polymerase rna polymerase and topo isomerase enzyme in g2 phase this is pre mitosis phase in this phase various cellular and structural components are involved in mitosis for synthesis in this phase the number of chromosomes are doubled 
and the cells become ready for active division. M phase is mitosis phase, which is the shortest phase of cell cycle. It is, as we, as we have seen in diagram, it is further divided into prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Here, the formation of two daughter cells are there, where due to the mutation, there is a loss of control of cell cycle, differentiation, and cell to cell adhesion and interaction. These changes results in morphological change, changes in cell. Now, the sign and symptom, chills, loss of appetite, fatigue, fever, weight loss, shortness of breath, abdominal pain, chest pain, cough, and heaviness. Diagno diagnosis of cancer. First, there is a screening of cancer. For screening for of particular cancer, there, there are different screening methods. For example, for the screening of cancer of breast, mammography and self-examination is done. For cancer of cervix, pap smear technique is done. For cancer of colon and rectum, rectal examination, blood test and colonoscopy is done. For prostate cancer, prostate specific antigen and transrectal ultrasonography is done. Treatment, first is surgery, chemotherapy and radiation. Target cancer treatment, small molecular inhibitors, antibodies, cell-based immunotherapy and gene therapy are the methods which are used for treatment of cancer. In chemotherapy, some drugs are used to kill cancer cells and reduce the cell division. It is toxic for healthy cells, hairs, bone marrow, lymphocytes, and epithelial cells of intestinal lining. Its side effects are hair loss, nausea, vomiting, and reduced immune response. Moving on to radiation therapy, here high energy rays are used to kill cancer cells. They stop the cells from growing and dividing. But it is only a local treatment. It can affect cells only in the local area. But at a particular area, these drugs affect. Its side effects are tiredness, skin rashes, redness, and loss of appetite. Surgical therapy. In this, the surgery is done to remove the entire mass. Biological therapy or immune therapy. Here, the monoclonal antibodies, interferons, interleukins, and several colonal Colony stimulating factors are used to kill cancer cells. Side effects include flu-like symptoms such as fever and chills, muscle aches, weakness, loss of appetite and diarrhea. Prevention of cancer, eating a healthy diet, exercising regularly, limiting alcohol, maintaining a healthy weight, no smoking or chewing tobacco, minimizing exposure to radiation and toxic chemicals, Reducing exposure to sun. Thank you.